Hey everybody, it's Angie from Trips with Angie and I am here on April 10th, 2023 in Yokohama, Japan getting ready to board the Holland America Westerdam for a two week sailing around Japan. Hopefully you're a subscriber so you've seen the other videos in this Japan series. In this video we're going to talk all about the first week on board, the ports we visited, what it was like, and what being on a Holland America Japan sailing is all about. Here's a look at our overall route as we began and ended our cruise in Yokohama, just outside of Tokyo. Our first port of call was Omazaki, which is very short ride from the port of Yokohama. We were welcomed to the port with this incredible ceremony. a private driver and a private guide to take us to a local shrine and viewpoint overlooking Mount Fuji. The shrine was about an hour away from the port. The Mount Fuji was not cooperating. <laughs> the weather was a little too foggy to see Mount Fuji, unfortunately, but we did get a beautiful view of the coastline and the different areas surrounding the shrine. To get to the shrine, you actually take a cable car down what's called a ropeway. So if you see things talking about a ropeway in Japan, it's what we would call a cable car in the U.S. So you head down into the forest and there you find the shrine. It's a beautiful shrine that was built to commemorate one of the last shoguns in Japanese history. This is part of his grave here. His ashes are in another spot uh, closer to Tokyo as well. So we spent some time exploring the shrine, learning more about its history, and then headed back up the ropeway through the forest to head back to the port. Now, an important thing to know if you are heading there in the future, there was a free shuttle in the port. So I think if we had known more, if we'd known that there was going to be a free shuttle and some more information about what was around the port, we probably wouldn't have booked this very expensive private excursion because we had to pay for the guide and for the private driver. We got back to the port and we found this incredible festival with local vendors. Green tea is very popular here. So they had different, you know, tastings for the green tea as well as some local food. So in hindsight, we would have done something different. Our next port of call was Kobe and we booked the Mount Ruku and Sake Brewing Museum tour through Holland America. Now Kobe has so much to do. You can get to Kyoto, you can get to Osaka, and it's a cool town just to explore. But we kind of wanted a package through Holland America. And once again, the weather disappointed. We had no view from the top of Mount Roku. Uh, this was the best we could do through the fog at the top of the ropeway. Again, another cable car that we got to ride um, from the top of the observatory down. Then we got in the bus and headed to the Sake Brewery Museum. Now, this was super interesting and I think the highlight of the excursion for me. It was an incredible museum, very detailed, really went through the history of making sake and then you got a chance to sample some of the sake as well as purchase some. Our next port of call was Kochi and we had another great welcoming ceremony. Now this was a difficult port. Holland America had no shore excursions available and I couldn't find any excursions through another vendor. There was a castle you could go visit but we decided just to stay on board so I could catch up on some work. The next day we started with scenic sailing through the Kanban Strait. It started about 7.30 a.m. and the commentary lasted till about 8.15 from our tour director, Rachel. Now, I was a little disappointed in this day because when we originally booked the cruise, we were supposed to dock in Fukuoka at 10 a.m. This got pushed all the way back to 2 p.m., really impacting the private excursion we had booked. And um, we were gonna go pretty far outside the city. But luckily our tour guide jumped right in and came up with an alternative itinerary we hopped on public transportation and made it to this incredible Buddhist temple with a huge reclining Buddha. Now, this is an incredible sight to see. And what's even cooler is you can actually go inside. So the reclining Buddha is made out of copper around ashes of Buddha that were sent to this temple. So you can go inside and see the ashes. And then when you come out, you play this little game where you put a ball into the box and win a prize. We hopped back on public transportation to the Hakata station to visit a local shrine. One thing that sets this shrine apart is it is the center of the Yamasaka festival that happens each summer. And this is part of the festival. So men race around town, a 5k race, pulling a one ton float behind them. 
right next to the shrine is a huge public market and shopping center. So we stopped in for some snacks. So this is cabbage that is doused in a little bit of vinegar as well as chicken skin skewers and pork skewers. For dinner, we headed to a popular ramen restaurant. So right when you enter, there's a touch screen kind of vending machine where you place your order and then you get individual tickets for all the things you order. Then you will take those tickets to a, your booth. And in that booth, you have a customized preference sheet for your ramen. How spicy do you want it? How rich do you want it? What kind of noodles do you want? You fill all of that out. They put dotted lines around what they recommend, which was super helpful. And then behind you are is the waiter. You get free water. And then they have these little things so you can communicate without really saying anything. So for instance, I don't know the ordering process. If you needed a little bit of help, then they open up the window and place your ramen and your beer, in my case, in front of you. It was absolutely delicious. Now, in terms of some special things that Holland America does, we notice that they have special food items like this ube ice cream that's very popular in the Philippines. They also had a matcha flavor. They had a special buffet highlighting all of the nationalities of the crew. And then each evening, they also had specials on the dining room menus highlighting food from around Asia and Japan. I hope you enjoyed this video as I talked about the first half of our cruise around Japan. The next video will cover the second half as we head to South Korea, Kanazawa, and the Hokkaido area.